Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Um, I'm uh, Munzer Dale. I'm the acting director of TPP and the director of the Institute for Data Systems and Society. I'd like to welcome all of you today to the 40th anniversary of the Technology and Policy Program. Uh, it's exciting to see so many people who have taken the time and effort to attend this event. I think it's an important event, and I think it says a lot about how important it is to MIT and to the outside world, so I'm very impressed and happy to see all of you here. Um, I thought this morning, I'm not going to keep you too long. I know we have a, a great program ahead of us, but I thought I'd make a few remarks about um, some of the things I learned about TPP being um, acting director, and then also some of the uh, things we're looking forward to uh, thinking of TPP as um, an important component of the new institute that was launched last year. Um, so TPP was started or created um, about 40 years ago. I think Noel is going to get into the detail of exactly 40 years, 40 years or not. Um, I won't spoil that, but that's a sneak preview. Um, and the vision was to educate students uh, who are scientists and technologists in aspects of social science that pertains to policy making. And it's really interesting to be thinking about policy because that's exactly how technology impacts society. And I think uh, the way I view it, and I've been uh, tutored by two personal tutors, Jessica and Noel, and um, spent a lot of hours with them. And I actually feel now I'm a lot, I know a lot more than I did two years ago, which is not a lot. Um, one aspect of policy is how technology impacts policy. You can think about the environment, you can think about certain analysis you can do, for, do, for example, with uh, uh, CO2 emission. You can then think about what policy can be put in place to uh, mitigate that emission, right? And then you can evaluate the cost of that policy and you can evaluate the viability of the policy. And that's all driven by technology. But at the same time, you have to think about how policy itself impacts technology. And I think this is really an important component as we are embarking on um, what we see today in terms of privacy and security and, and what we see in the internet and the Apple issue with the government and so on, the Amazon issues with the government. And, and I give you some simple examples there. Um, today, for example, the policies and regulations about privacy are pushing research in computing, particularly in cryptography, what's called holomorphic encryption, to allow us to compute in data that is encrypted and get results, and the only person who can actually see the results are the person who has the key to the, to the encryption. And so uh, this is advancing uh, technology, and it's advancing computing because of regulations and, and so forth. And so if you think about this problem, it's really a closed loop. Uh, technology impacts policy, policy impacts technology, and unless we have a good grasp and connect the policy making to the technological uh, um, understanding, this loop will be broken. And I think this is really the, the vision and the success story of TPP. Uh, uh, the education of students who are able to uh, straddle this line and think about the technology aspect, but at the same time think about the evaluation of policy and the creation of new policy. Um, TPP over the years have produced over 1,200 students, and what is amazing if you look at, and you can see a lot of data about this, but what's amazing is that you see our students have gone into industry, government, and academia, and a lot of different other places. Um, I would say maybe 40% in industry and over 10% in uh, government, over 10% in academia. And I think this is a very interesting spread. Students learning this technology and learning these techniques are able to penetrate different aspects of the workforce and kind of carry this vision and this sort of training into the impact of what happens in these, in these different areas. Um, I don't have to tell you this because a lot of you are alums and you've already products of this program and you know what kind of impact you're making in your places, but I think if you look at it collectively, it's actually been quite impressive. Um, so what is happening is that uh, in uh, last year in September, MIT launched a new institute called the Institute for Data Systems and Society. And um, the institute uh, vision and the mission is to address societal problems. And um, societal problems are very simple. The societal challenges are really challenges where the society is part of the loop in the system. That is, 
society is well integrated with the technology. And this is happening everywhere right now. We see this in the uh, in, in, in power grid and consumption of energy. People are becoming more and more engaged with their demand and their demand shifting because we are enabling them to do that through a new technology. We're seeing this in the financial sector where uh, high velocity training is happening. Um, you, can, you can essentially uh, buy and sell stocks in real time. As soon as you get bored in this meeting, you can just go to your stock market and you start buying and selling. And, and it's, a, it's a very, very fast engagement of society. We see it in transportation. Um, you know, right now, all of us are getting signals from Google and from Waze and so forth about where we are and where every, everybody else is and what little streets and what neighborhood are open for you to, to go through. And, and it's impacting us in many ways, impacting traffic, impacting congestion, impacting uh, serenity of certain neighborhoods. It's actually creating a social phenomenon. And, and if you actually go uh, in, in San Francisco and Seattle, I think there is an uproar going on among cities about the fact that Waze has destroyed their neighborhoods. Um, policies and regulations around these things are going to be essentially impact, impactful, but, but the, these are important examples. The internet is another example. Share, you know, bandwidth sharing is another example. Uh, security and, and so forth are all examples of societal challenges where the society is an integral part of these problems. So IDSS is looking at this problem broadly, and we think the the aspects of this that has to do with policy are critical. You know, certainly, we cannot impact society without understanding the issues of policy. And so as a result, and in thinking about the launching of IDSS, it was made as a, as a very positive decision that TPP sits within IDSS. And so right now, TPP is, a, is an integral subset of what we do. Uh, this is, of course, um, non-trivial. TPP is a 40-year-old program, and IDSS is a one-year-old program. IDSS has uh, just launched a PhD program that we call Social and Engineering Science uh, uh, Systems, and it's also focused on educating students at the intersection between uh, um, um, uh, engineering and science and social sciences with respect to a certain domain expertise. So it's not that far away from the thinking of TPP. So now what we are in, in the process, and you can see that in, potentially today in the lunch meeting, uh, the thinking of what's going on about how to integrate the program fully within IDSS and understand that the values and objectives and the mission are all aligned. And of course, you know, there's a little bit of growing pain, but certainly this is something that we're committed to, something that we would make sure that's going to happen in the next couple of years. Any feedback, any response that we get from you will be, of course, very, very important to us. But uh, you know, we think this is um, a great initiative, IDSS, and we think TPP is a great program to be part of it, and we were excited about this. So I won't uh, take long. Uh, I want to welcome you all again to a very exciting program that we have today. I'll be around most of the day and would love to chat with you and get your feedback and, and anything you would like to tell us about the program or IDSS or the combination of the two. Um, so feel free to just um, come by and, and talk. And um, I'll turn the microphone to Noel. Thank you. everyone. Um, I want to give you a brief rundown of what you can expect today and just introduce to you the fact that we are celebrating uh, TPP's 40th birthday. Um, so I want this to be a little bit of a festive occasion. Uh, so just starting out, um, thinking a little bit about the history of TPP, um, I pulled the date that the TPP degree was awarded and you'll notice that that was in 1975. So TPP is actually almost 41, which might be a little bit of a problem. Um, we thought that, you know, well, we're st it's still 40, so not quite yet. Uh, but in fact, in 2006, we actually had a 30th birthday that was in June 2006. So N plus 10, I think we're still safe in having the 40th birthday right now. Uh, so. During the 30th birthday celebration, uh, that was really focused, and, and some of you in the audience were, were here for that 30th birthday celebration, uh, really focused on, on TPP's history, uh, where we were, where we came from, how TPP was founded, and really acknowledging um, some of the, the great contributions that TPP has made over the years. Now, having 10 years passed, we really hope to focus on the future. 
So the agenda that we've structured today is really designed to look forward rather than backward. Uh, we want to think about what are the new challenges in technology and policy for the next generation. Uh, so in honor of the 40th birthday, thinking about the next 40 years. And that's really how we've designed the agenda. So I'll just give you a little preview of what we envision for the day. We'll have panel discussions. Jessica's gonna give, a, give more of a uh, preview of what exactly we have in the panel discussion, so I'm not gonna say too much about that right now. At lunch, we will have, as Monser mentioned, the, a discussion on technology policy education. And I, I do wanna pause here because we do have a 40th birthday. And some people say at 40 is when you become over the hill. And this may remind some of you in the audience, particularly some of the TPP alumni, of a particular diagram. Um, this comes from Granger Morgan's work um, of technology policy education and the unstable equilibrium that is technology policy between straight engineering and science technology studies. Uh, so hopefully with the theme of not becoming over the hill, uh, we can maintain that equilibrium and talk about that during our, our lunch session. As a final panel, we have reflections uh, by our students and, and recent graduates who really represent the, the future of TPP. We also are taping these panels and uh, we are active on social media. Uh, this, is, this is MIT's uh, TPP's Twitter account and we have a hashtag for this event. So I know some of you on Twitter, please feel free to, to live tweet and, and keep up the conversation. Uh, Stephanie is our, our TPP tweeter for the day. And we just also really want to thank you for being here. TPP is what it is because of its, its great community and its alumni. And we're really hoping that this is a, this is a very interactive event, that we'll have a lot of great conversations, um, both during the panels and during the breaks. And I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of you and, and talking with you. And with that, I'll turn it over to Jessica to introduce the panels. Thanks. Thank you, Noel and Munzer. It's great to see everyone. Thanks everyone for coming. It's good to see all of you uh, together in one room. And I just wanted to take a few minutes to very briefly discuss uh, today's, today's panels. Um, this is gonna be a little bit more, kind of, we're gonna get very, um, we're gonna get into research and sort of some of the challenges and research in this area, so. Um, Thank you, Noel, for keeping it light, but we'll, we'll keep this kind of good cop, bad cop routine going throughout the day, because I'm gonna kind of bring us down to earth now. Okay, so, um, all right, so these discussions are aimed at taking stock of progress that we've made, but as Noel mentioned, we wanna focus even more on looking forward um, and discuss challenges and opportunities looking forward. So we'll look back a little bit, we'll allow just a little bit of reminiscing and, and sort of self-congratulation but we're gonna focus more heavily on the future and new problems that we can tackle in technology policy research, education, and practice. Um, I wanna briefly introduce our panels today and describe the charge that we've, we've given to, to our panelists. We have panels in four areas, as you may have seen on the agenda. The first one will focus on technology and innovation. Uh, the second on technology and regulation, the third on technology development and sustainability, and the fourth on technology conflict and cooperation. So you may have noticed that that word technology used quite a bit. I thought it would be good to provide a working definition of it at the outset, um, where when we talk about technology, we're really talking about transforming raw materials. Those could be biological, geological ma materials, human information processing capability into a plethora of useful forms um, that support economic activity and ideally support human well-being. And here I'm adopting the definition of technology um, proposed by Lewis Mumford in his 1934 book, Technics and Civilization, uh, to encompass both hardware and software, including machines, processes, structures, utensils, skills, and knowledge. So it's quite a broad definition, not just technology as artifact, as physical artifact. 
Now, technology features in, in our panels as um, a double-edged sword, as a problem and as a solution. And this is part of why we need to understand the connection between technology and policy, why technology needs policy and vice versa, as, as Munzer mentioned. Um, in the area of climate change, this is very evident um, where technology and industrialization was supported um, by, or, or industrialization was really supported by fossil fuels since the late 1800s, uh, but technology in the form of fossil fuels and, and extraction conversion of energy has really created the climate change problem that we're facing today. This problem can now not be solved without technological solutions. So we can really see uh, technology here as both problem and solution. Um, in the area of development, conflict and cooperation and regulation, there are similar examples. Uh, similarly, doing this kind of research carries an internal tension within it, um, given that there's, the, it's challenging to cross traditional disciplinary boundaries, um, but there's also opportunity in addressing these very important, these very interesting, difficult questions that affect society today. I think that it's that opportunity that draws the excellent students that we'll, you'll meet today and, and our alumni to this program. Um, these challenges aren't gonna go away and so we really need to address them and research can play, can play an important role. Um, and so to do this well, to, to really address these challenges, um, I think it's important to recognize what the challenges are and identify the basic ingredients of any high quality research um, and use this to give shape to what often start as very amorphous broad questions. And so it's in this spirit that we've asked our panelists to address the following questions. Uh, what are the characteristics of technology and policy as a research domain, and how do methods and approaches for technology policy challenges differ from other research and policy arenas? Our second question is, are new methods needed to address complex societal challenges in areas such as regulation, innovation, development, sustainability, and conflict and cooperation? What lessons can we draw from different disciplinary approaches? How can the research community best identify and encourage appropriate uses of science and technology policy, um, or science and technology in policy decision making? What are the characteristics of science and technology efforts that have been particularly effective at linking quantitative information and decision making? And finally, our fifth question, what are the main research priorities that would improve our understanding of science technology and its role in addressing complex societal challenges? So we've asked the panelists to draw on their own research, provide examples, so we can get a sort of concrete discussion going, um, but, but touch on these broad themes. Our speakers are drawn from a set of practitioners and researchers and will focus on research and practical application of their research findings. Uh, we have a number of you know, really impressive individuals, some of which are TPP alums, um, some of which are people that are soon to graduate from the TPP program um, from, with, with important roles in government, uh, really stellar academics, um, as well as um, those that, that intersect with, with the private sector. And this mirrors TPP as a program which really bridges research and practice. It's a research-focused master's program, um, and many of our students go on to do doctoral research and pursue academic careers, but equally important are those that take the learning, the learnings from TPP, the research lessons, what they learn in classes, and apply them in practice in government and private industry in dealing with these complex societal challenges. So I'm really excited to, to have this. We're, we're very, both very excited to have this set of uh, distinguished speakers and um, interested and, and really keen, um, looking forward to hearing their input on the central question today, which is what have we achieved? And even more importantly, how can we meet the challenges of the next 40 years of research education um, and education on technology and policy? in TPP and also in our sister programs at other universities.